We're back at the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dykes. Now, on Monday, we spoke at length with Ben Fuchs, but there's so much more. He's a registered pharmacist, by the way. Uh, he's going to tell you about his background, and we're going to get into how you can use nutrition and really just general knowledge about your health to address your own issues, but also specifically to disengage from the tyrannical systems that we face today. It really is an info war that applies to your own health as well. Uh, think about how much knowledge they've kept from us. And uh, the quote we were talking about during the break, the people perish for lack of knowledge. And that includes submitting to a centralized system on all fronts, including food, nutrition, health, and the rest of it. Uh, so, Ben, let's get back into it. Last time we spoke in depth uh, about your list, the first two or three on there, uh, the importance of protein and fat intake uh, for for losing weight and for right. gaining good health. And where does the list go from there? Well, also protein fat for cravings. Remember, your body's going to crave certain things. And if your brain is telling you you need fat and you need uh, sugar, you're not going to be able to use willpower to get it. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit the brain satisfaction buttons. For sugar, use protein. For fat, use uh, essential fatty acids. The last thing we talked about when we talked last was carbohydrates. Carbohydrates get a bad rap. Uh, because most of the carbohydrates people think about are refined processed carbohydrates or grain-based carbohydrates. Now, we didn't get to talk about grains, but they're a serious problem. And I think we mentioned the fact that political hegemony evolved, co-evolved, with our ability to process and agriculture and grow grains. So, uh, grains are a big problem, sugar is a big problem, and when people think about carbohydrates, they typically think about grains and sugar, or refined sugars and refined grains, so they always want to be on a low-carb diet. Now, when it comes to grains and sugars, that's true. You do want to be on a low-carb diet when you're referring mm -hmm. to grains and sugars, but when it comes to vegetables, you don't want to be on a low-carb diet. You want to be on a high vegetable intake diet and take as much eating as much vegetables as you want. Last time we talked about the environmental protective factors that are found in vegetables as well. So, chapter three is carbohydrates. When you think carbohydrates, you want to make sure you're getting most of your calories from carbohydrates, but they need to be vegetable carbohydrates, mm -hmm. whatever that takes. If it means a salad for breakfast, if it means vegetable juice all day long, using veggie juices, whatever it takes, you want about a pound of vegetables for every 50 pounds of body weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you're looking at three pounds of vegetables a day. It's a lot of vegetables for most people. Yeah. A couple big salads a day, two or three big salads a day. The next, if we can just continue, the next chapter, chapter four, is fiber. Um, and fiber has a couple of very important roles to play. One of the most important roles fiber plays for weight loss is it expands your stomach. And when your stomach is expanded, signals are sent to your brain that say, I'm full, and it shuts down the appetite. So eating more fiber is a great way to fill yourself up and shut down your appetite, and there's lots of ways to do it. One of my favorite ways is nuts, especially almonds. And when you're using nuts or you're using fiber, especially if you're using them to, to, uh, to fill up, to lose weight, make sure you drink lots of water with your fiber. There's two main kinds of fiber, by the way. There's soluble fiber, which is the kind of fiber that's in peaches or pears, this kind of squishy fiber. And then there's solid fiber or uh, insoluble fiber, which comes from nuts or seeds. It's like the kind of fiber that's in a stalk of celery when you peel that little wire off or the kind of fiber that's in the shells of nuts. They're both important. You need both kinds. They're especially important for the digestive system. And we didn't get to talk about digestive health, but there is no system in the body more important to take care of than the digestive system, and there's no system in the body that will mess your life up worse than the digestive system, than problems in the digestive system. There's a commercial on TV about uh, Crohn's disease, and there's a lady, and she talks about it's how... It popped up virtually out of nowhere. You know what I'm... Yeah, it did, right? Crohn's disease is a classic uh, food-based disease, and uh, she says uh, in the commercial, the whole line is, oh... You, are you worried about Crohn's disease? You can't, you can't go to parties and you can't go out at night because you'll never... Basically, what they're saying is you're going to have to go to the bathroom every few minutes when you have these kinds of intestinal diseases. Well, let me tell you something. One of the best ways to protect yourself from a digestive disease is to make sure you're getting enough fiber. There's lots of other ways, too, but that's one of the best ways. You want, by the way, around four tablespoons of fiber a day. Most of us are lucky if we get a teaspoon of fiber every day. My favorite way to make fiber or to get fiber is to make your own fiber where you get yourself a little coffee grinder, Put some flax seeds in there, press the button, makes the most delicious ground up fiber. You can throw pistachios in there or almonds, delicious. Put it in your smoothie, sprinkle it on salads. And then the uh, chapter five is water. 
You want to be drinking half a gallon of water to a gallon of water every day. There's different takes on water. My personal favorite water is distilled water. There's power waters and there's charged waters and there's structured waters. And these are all very good. But for most people, distilled water is, is going to be fine. What you really want to watch out for, though, is tap water, especially fluoridated and chlorinated tap water. Most water is chlorinated. Almost all, almost all water is chlorinated. Almost all water is fluoridated. And let me tell you something about fluoride and, and uh and a chlorine, they are specifically toxic to the glands of the body, especially your brain glands, your thyroid gland, it's not really a brain gland, but it's close, and your pineal gland. The pineal gland is the gland that's responsible for higher consciousness. It's the gland that processes serotonin and, and processes melatonin. Both melatonin and serotonin have very important spiritual significance. So-called third eye. Exactly. Your pineal gland is your third eye. And it, very interestingly, it had been called your third eye by ancient people. But when they found the pineal gland, and, they look, and Descartes called it the seat of the soul, by the way, the pineal gland. But when they found the pineal gland and started to examine it, they actually found eye tissue in the pineal gland because the pineal gland is sensitive to light. Now, only God knows what a light-sensitive gland is doing flat, flat dab in the middle of your brain. But the point is, it is, it is sensitive to light, and it's involved in serotonin and melatonin metabolism. These are two very important uh, neurotransmitters for higher consciousness. And think about it, by the way, the best-selling drugs in the world, among the best-selling drugs in the world, are serotonin drugs, drugs that manipulate the serotonin system. We all seem to singularly have these serotonin problems. In any case, the pineal gland, which is responsible for the processing of melatonin and serotonin, is also very, very, very sensitive to fluoride. In fact, the highest concentrations of fluoride in the body are found in this absolutely critical gland that's important for higher consciousness. Now, that's, that smells like conspiracy theory to me, <laughs> if anything does. Why would they want to have this unbelievably important gland, very possibly the single most important gland in your body, to be fluoridated. Only God knows why that is. And I'm sure you know the story of fluoride in the, in the concentration camp prisoners oh, yeah. and all that. Exactly. And the Soviets, too. And exactly. All of it. Fluoride is a classic dumbing agent. And it's the active ingredient in, in Prozac and a lot of other serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So if you're taking Prozac, you are fluoridating yourself above and beyond the fluoride that you get from water. So when it comes to water, you want to be super clean with your water, which is why I like distilled water. And you can also use structured waters. Water is important for detoxification. Water is important for the hydraulic system of the body. The, the uh, vertebrae and the spinal cord are hydraulic systems. Water is important for the cartilage in your joints. Uh, cartilage swells when it contacts water. Uh, water is important for uh, digestive health. Water is important for helping your body, for being able to digest your food. You will feel crappy when you're dehydrated, and you will feel hungry when you're dehydrated. So once again, a great tool for dieters is the next time you think that you're hungry, go get some water. You could very well just be dehydrated. It could very well be that the water will satisfy your hunger. In addition to the fact that water will swell your stomach and will activate all your satiety, your satisfaction hormones. So chapter five is water. And those are, those are your macronutrients, your big nutrients, protein, uh, essential <clears throat> fatty acids, carbohydrates, fiber, and water. The next half of the eight chapters of good nutrition is micronutrients, trace nutrients, things you need, tiny little bits that you could think of as the pixie dust that activates the macronutrients. So mm -hmm. you need grams of protein, you need tablespoons of fat, you need grams of carbohydrates, you need grams of fiber and, and half a gallon to a gallon of water. You could think of vitamins and minerals as a little pixie dust that activates the uh, macronutrients. What's important about the vitamins and minerals is you cannot make them. They come from your diet, which is super critical because it means if you're not supplementing or you're not getting this stuff from your diet, you're not getting them. In fact, one of the things that we learn in pharmacy school is that what we call diseases are many times nothing more than the manifestations of nutritional deficiencies in these elements that you absolutely must have that you cannot live without. So I like to tell people, you're not sick, you're starving. And nothing demonstrates that more than deficiencies in the trace nutrients. For example, your uh, vitamins. Let's take your uh, water soluble. Your vitamins can be divided into uh, vitamins that dissolve in water. They call them water soluble, the way salt dissolves in water, or fatty vitamins, the, uh, vitamins that dissolve in fat. Your water soluble vitamins are vitamin C and the B complex. Now, vitamin C is so critical for the body that 
it almost doesn't even, it deserves its own category of nutrients. Vitamin C is made by the entire animal kingdom with the exception of human beings, guinea pigs, and certain primates, and they make a lot of vitamin C. For example, a guinea pig, according to uh, U.S. government statistics, a guinea pig needs 1,500 milligrams, the equivalent of 1,500 milligrams of vitamin C a day in order to live. Now, it doesn't need 1,500 milligrams, it needs the, the equivalent when you adjust for its body weight. They're going to tell you that the RDA, uh, the RDA for vitamin C is 60 to 100 milligrams. They're going to tell you that a human being needs one fifteenth of the vitamin C that a guinea pig needs, according to the Department of Agriculture's own numbers. Yeah. What the heck's wrong with that picture? Now, vitamin C is so phenomenally important for the immune system. It's important for building tissue. It's important for stress. In fact, it may primarily be your body's most important stress vitamin because when an animal is under stress, it immediately makes more vitamin C. Human beings, for whatever reason, have lost the ability to make vitamin C. One of the, if you had to do one thing, just one simple thing for your nutrition, get some vitamin C powder or get the Beyond Tangy Tangerine for your longevity, which contains a big jolt of vitamin C, and drink vitamin C water or Beyond Tangy Tangerine water all day. That's one of the simplest things you could do to create a dramatic change in your health. The second group of, uh, the second uh, important water-soluble vitamin is the group of vitamins. It's called the B-complex. Now, B-complex vitamins are specifically important for the kinds of tissue in your body that moves the fastest, and that is the brain, the heart, the skin, and the digestive system. So any issues around those four parts of the body, the brain, the heart, the skin, the digestive system, depend largely on B-complex, on the vitamins of the B-complex. For example, there's one B vitamin called vitamin B3, niacin. Now, niacin is, is one of the rare vitamins that your body actually will make under emergency conditions. That's how important niacin is. Uh, if you go to medical school, they'll tell you that the, deficient, uh, the deficiency disease caused by niacin deficiency is called pellagra. And the signs of pellagra are known as the four Ds. And the four Ds are diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and death. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the four Ds, these are the four symptoms, these are the four signs that you're deficient in niacin. So let's think about it. Diarrhea means you got a GI problem, a digestive problem, right? Well, how many Americans do you know have digestive issues? 60 to 70 million Americans, at least, have digestive issues. Dermatitis, skin diseases, skin rashes. How many people do you know have skin diseases or skin rashes? Uh, dementia, mental problems, forgetfulness, int intellectual issues. How many people do you know have problems mm -hmm. that way? And then, of course, death. It could very well be that what we consider to be just normal toxicities or side effects or sicknesses or illnesses are nothing more than a simple niacin deficiency, vitamin B3 deficiency. And once mm -hmm. you start taking these things, then you'll notice the results. Then you, can, then you can say for sure that's what causes it. But my point is, is that simple nutritional deficiencies are connected to what we call the ills of life to what we call just parts of growing old, just the way it is when you get older. It could be nothing more than simple nutritional deficiencies, and that's just one vitamin, vitamin B3. So the B-complex is made up of, uh, of uh, I think it's eight different vitamins, vitamins B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12, folic acid. There's a few other compounds that are similar to the B-complex. In any case, the B-complex is important for energy, it's important for stress, it's important for mental health. One of the most important roles the B vitamins play in health is in the cardiovascular system. There was a guy, a professor at Harvard named Kilmer McCulley, and uh, when everybody's all screaming about cholesterol, which is really much ado about nothing when it comes to heart disease, the party line in the medical community was, oh, it's fat, it's blood fat, it's cholesterol. Kilmer McCulley, who's a, a professor at, uh, I think it was at Harvard, he said, no, no, it's not. It's not uh, cholesterol, it's something called homocysteine. You heard of this, homocysteine? No. It's a chemical in the body called homocysteine that's building up in the blood. It turns out that whenever you have heart disease, now, whenever you have heart disease, you don't always have elevated cholesterol, but whenever you have heart disease, you always have elevated homocysteine. So Kilmer McCauley was saying, well, I think it's the homocysteine. It's not the cholesterol. And of course, he ended up getting vilified and getting lost his job, and he wrote a couple books on this stuff. But the point about homocysteine is, in order to take care of homocysteine, which is definitively, unlike cholesterol, cholesterol's never been definitively linked to, to heart disease, but homocysteine has been definitively connected to heart disease. What you need to lower your homocysteine is about a nickel's worth of the B-complex every day. That's all you need to take care of your heart. Between, vitamin B, between the B-complex 
and vitamin C, you have the large bulk of nutrients that are important for cardiovascular health without drugs, without doctors, without insurance companies, without toxicity, without Obamacare. Do you see how powerful this message is? You can use simple nutrients to take care of everything you think you need to go to the doctor for. You can use simple nutrients to bypass every interface that you have with the medical community. You can use simple nutrients to not only bypass all of that, but to feel better, to feel great, to be able to withstand all of the diseases that your friends are dropping dead from, to be able to prevent stroke, to be able to prevent heart attack, to be able to prevent cardiovascular issues, a nickel's worth of B-complex every day. I'm telling you, something like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which is loaded with the B-complex and the vitamin C, is your single most, empower most powerful tool to allow it's you to disengage. almost everything in it. Almost everything. And almost then when you everything. started taking it, you, well, for me anyway, I immediately felt energetic. And then, but as the weeks went on, it helped with my appetite and everything. Everything else. And that's why, that's such an important point, because we all, we know, I'm vain, we we're, we're all want to look good, and so we end up focusing on looking good for our supplements, and that's great, because you you will look good. But what gets lost sometimes is this idea that you have now reduced your risk of every single disease that you yeah. can name. You've improved every single marker of good health and you've reduced your risk of degeneration. To me, I'm not afraid of dying, but I don't want to degenerate. I don't want to rot. I don't want to get a stroke. I don't want to have an aneurysm. I don't want to have a heart attack. And the last thing I want to do is end up in a hospital where I have to trust the doctor, where I have to rely on his good faith. Do you know when you go to the, one of the first things they do when you go to the hospital is they take you off all your vitamins. They take you off all your supplements so they don't interfere with your drugs. Well, how, is it through centralization or what? How did they become another center of corrupt priesthood? I mean, because we as individuals, you and I, have abdicated, abdicated our authority to the medical model. And by the way, this is a recent phenomenon. At the turn of the 20th century, medical schools and doctoring were not glorified. Medical schools were like little uh, trade schools where you could get a diploma in two years. And doctoring was not considered to be this holy, sacred profession. But around 1910, a guy named Abraham Flexner went around to all the medical schools and he created something called the Flexner Report, which mandated that if a medical school was gonna get funding, by the government or funding by foundations like the Rockefeller Foundation or the Carnegie Foundation or was going to get funding from drug companies, they had to have a standardized protocol and a, standard, a standardized curriculum where the doctors would be taught the party line. And yeah. that's when all of this started to happen. And uh, our one, the wonderful, warm, fuzzy feelings that we have about doctors, this whole idea like, Oh, my son's a doctor, my daughter married a doctor. That all started with the lobbying of the American Medical Association at the turn of the 20th century to the point today, four or five generations later, we all think that being a doctor is some holy, sacred profession. Now, I wanna say that doctors can be nice people, and there's nothing wrong with doctors per se. It's the medical model that is problematic. Secondly, when we, we have wonderful surgeries, and if I have a heart attack, or if I have a broken leg, or if I get hit by a bus, I want a surgeon, I want a doctor, I don't want vitamins. I want somebody to stitch me up and sew me up. And what I call heroic medicine is wonderful. It's really quite a miracle, and it might be the greatest thing about being alive in the 20th century is that we have the, uh, the means of being heroic with the medical model. But with day-to-day -day medicine, with day-to-day -day health, medicine is an abject 100% total and complete failure. And it is not the job of the doctor to take care of your good health. That is the fundamental message. That is our responsibility. And we have abdicated our responsibility to the men in the white coats because they've told us that they know what they're doing and what has ended up happening is we are sicker and fatter than ever before. And that is because we have given up our responsibility for our bodies to the point where when we're sick, when we have a, a allergy, we're willing to go to somebody else to tell us if we're allergic to that food. Mm -hmm. Now we think that's what food allergy testing is. You have a food allergy, you are, we are so disassociated from our bodies, we're so disconnected from our bodies, that I'm gonna go to you and ask you if I'm allergic to something. And what the doctor will do is he'll take a little bit of your blood, he'll put it in a dish, and then I'll put some food in the dish, and I'll say, oh yeah, you're allergic to that food, instead of us knowing what our body is responding to or how our body's responding. We don't even know what our body does, let alone to know if we're allergic or if we're sick from something. So the job that we have as human beings, 
The, our most important job, if you ask me, is to understand how our bodies work and how our bodies work vis-a-vis -vis or interfacing with things like food and oxygen and water. It's the sing to me, that's the single most important thing to do as a human being, is understand how our bodies work. Look, I've been listening to your radio show. You can find it, what, at brightsideben.com. Brightsideben.com. But I've been say. trying to put in, you know, start taking these nutritional supplements, and you feel the difference within, yeah, almost right away, really. Almost right away. And that's, the, you and know, so, that's another good point, Aaron. And we have it at uh, InfoWarsTeam.com, by the way, the oh, young look at that. vitamins. Who's that smiley guy right there? Look yeah, it's a great program, though. I mean, people should really check it out and study what you say, because you've got a lot of wisdom in there. Thank you. I appreciate that. More than that. we could cover in this relatively short interview. I appreciate that. But you said something very interesting. And this, to me, this is so cool. The sicker you are, the more deficient you are, the faster you recover. The, the more deficient you are in nutrients, the faster your body absorbs those nutrients. The more weight you need to lose, the faster you lose the weight. To mm. me, that is the great gift of the human body, is the sicker you are, the faster you recover. And your body, your body can turn on a dime if you turn on a dime. I don't care what you have, what your health disease is. I almost don't even, when people call me up on the radio program, I almost don't even want to hear their specific diagnosis. In right. fact, I think the diagnosis is, diagnoses should die because what diagnosis does is it allows an incompetent medical professional to go to a little book and to see what the, what the appropriate treatment is for your disease. Not to do the medical detective work to figure out where your biochemistry has gone wrong and what exactly is happening inside your body, but to treat you based on a protocol that's been set by the people who are selling you the treatment. The protocols and the drug, uh, the prescribing uh, uh, rituals, the prescribing regime, uh, regimens that are de uh, determined for your particular illness are, are set up by the people who are selling you the drugs. Yeah. The drug companies set up the cholesterol levels, for example, and when the, uh, your LDL levels went from 100 to 70, they, first they said, well, uh, if you're at 100, that's good, and then they said, no, it should be 70. That was some advisory board to the FDA that was manned by representatives of the cholesterol-lowering drug companies. So the people who are selling us the medicine are telling us what the standards should be for our health that the things that they're selling us will treat. So it, it's a scandal of epic proportions. Of well, this is where I'm at. I mean, politically, philosophically, we know we have to change this thing. We know we can change ourselves individually. How do we begin to fight back against the big pharma problem, not, the big agri problem? By not participating, not eating the fast food, not eating the restaurant food, not eating what they're selling you. Not, not, you know, not buying what they're selling you, I'm telling you, not eating what they're selling you. And if somebody's selling you food on a commercial, that's a food you probably don't want to eat. If there's a little jingle they're singing, that's a food you probably don't want to eat. Because food value is inversely proportional to the amount of marketing that's spent on that food. They don't market broccoli, they don't market Brussels sprouts, they don't market food that's good for you, they market food that is highly processed. The profit margins on cereals, on crackers, on breads is unconscionable. Because when you buy a box of cereal, for example, what you're basically buying is a box of air. And they say, oh, contents may settle. That box that's this high contains this much food, and if you take out the air out of the flakes, or out of the puffs, you get even less food. And that's a box that's gonna go for four bucks, or five bucks these days at the supermarket. The profit margin on that stuff is repulsive. And why do you think the biggest companies in the world, like Philip Morris and the cigarette companies, you know what else they own? They own Keebler, and they own Nabisco, and they own the potato chip companies, and they own the, the snack food companies. Well, there's more than one reason for that, all the vertical and horizontal integration. And they own all of that stuff, because that food not only is high profit, not only is it high margin, but it also contains chemicals that will keep you eating because just like people the people don't know how to hack into their brains food processors know good and well how to hack into your brain and they know how to hack into your brain so that you'll keep consuming their foods so the single most important thing you can do it's not funny to eat potato chips people think it's a joke and they say oh well I'm addicted to french fries oh I'm just gonna eat my french fries it tastes delicious that is participating in the new world order that is participating in the machine that's engaging with the machine for every french fry you eat there's another little rivet that is bonding you to the the, the machine of, of tyranny so the way the way you control this stuff is by taking the rivets out, by disengaging from the machine, taking control of your chemistry because, you know what, Aaron, there's nothing more intimate than your biochemistry. There's nothing more intimate to you than your own personal chemistry. And if you let anybody else interfere with that, that is letting, anybody, that is letting somebody into your sovereign space. 
This is your sovereign space. Your biochemical universe, your biochemical milieu is yours. You're personal. Nobody else has that. There's a, a, a Aaron personal biochemistry. There's a Ben personal biochemistry. There's a personal biochemistry for all of us. And if we let somebody get in there, if we let somebody hack with, into the machinery, we are letting somebody into our sovereign space. And that is the most personal affront that there is. Mm -hmm. So how do you take over? You figure out a way that you don't eat the french fries. You figure out a way that you don't eat the potato chips. It's not funny. I hear people make jokes about it. I don't find it personally funny that uh, uh, we ha we're compelled to eat french fries or compelled to eat potato chips. That is a demonstration of the most offensive and e egregious intrusion into your sovereign space that's, that's, that is possible. Well, I agree. And then uh, we have so much problems with the economic situation, all the focus on the housing bubble. Right. I mean, there's a huge medical bubble. They make money on the way up and the way down. Please. Selling all this food, all the modern diet stuff. But then uh, talk about big agri in the medical industry. GNP. Excuse me, G big pharma. Do you know what the, G uh, the, the gross national product is? 15% health care. It's trillions of dollars. If, if we got healthy, 15% of our GNP would go down the tubes. So we have created an economic system that feeds on our sickness, that depends on us being hospitalized. Why do you think there's Obamacare? You think Obamacare is there for people? Obamacare is, not care. Obamacare is not there for people. Obamacare is there so you can have guaranteed federal money for drug companies, guaranteed federal money for hospitals, guaranteed federal money for HMOs. It's not there for individual people. If we really cared about individual people, we would have national magnesium insurance, where every American gets 2,000 milligrams of magnesium for being an American. Your tax dollars go to for your nutrition. Your tax dollars go so you can have a massage every week. Your tax dollars go so you can have a, a yogurt every week or some kind of quality food every week. We don't have that. We have a system of health care where your tax dollars go to drug companies. Your tax dollars go to hospitals. Your tax dollars go to HMOs and insurance companies. We hear about all the diarrhea and diseases that could be fixed for pennies in Africa or some third world country, but they spend the money on planned agriculture for GMOs. and Exactly. You know. Farming. And we know that our health began to decline as soon as we farm. That's the last thing we want to be doing if we really care about people is agriculture and, and teaching them farming techniques. We want to be making sure that everybody has supplementation. To me, the, it, it is so simple, Aaron. It's almost negligent, negligent for us to not be caring, taking care of a nutritional supplement program, for us not to be incorporating a nutritional supplement program in our life. It's almost like giving in to the New World Order. And I know people don't intentionally mean to do that, but when you eat the french fries and you say, well, I don't supplement or I'm not going to supplement or I'm not going to take care of my dietary needs, you're almost giving yourself up. You're almost throwing yourself into the arms of the New World Order. To me, getting on a supplement program, getting on an exercise program, becoming powerful and strong from a nutritional standpoint is the greatest statement you can make against Big Pharma. It's the greatest statement you can make against the New World Order. And by the way, we become docile to the extent that we participate in the food system. We become dumb to the extent that we, become, that we participate in the food system, and we become sick to the extent that we participate in this food care, in, in our food system. So if you wanna be not docile and strong, if you wanna be not uh, uh, dumb but smart, you have to figure out a way to control the food you're eating, and the best way to do that is with a nutritional supplement we program. We know about Bertrand Russell, he's a philosopher. Board. Yeah, well, he wrote The Impact of Science on Society in about 1950. He said the way they're going to control the populations, there's a lot of quotes, but the key quote, through diet, injections, and injunctions. And injunctions is probably the most obscure of those terms, but that's withholding uh, all this nutritional stuff. Is, I didn't know that. That's awesome. So well, he actually said that. Sense. He actually said that. Oh, yeah. It's he all actually about admitted it. Literally keeping yeah. us dumbed down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? There's no excuse to be dumb these days because we have InfoWars. We have the Internet. We have people like Alex Jones and yourself who are going out and preaching the message. So just like disease is volitional to a large extent, diabetes is a volitional disease to a large extent, heart disease, high blood pressure, these are choices that we make. Being dumb is a choice also because today, God love the Internet. God love InfoWars. God love people who are trying to wake up the American public, we have access to all of this stuff. You almost have to choose to be dumb. You almost have to have to choose to be blind. You almost have to put blinders on your eyes intentionally if, you, if you're going to miss what's right in your face. Well, I know what you're saying, but it's very easy to get caught up in that false world they build and sell you on TV. It is. It's it is. very much part of that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which I think 
is an expression of reverse engineering how to control this. I mean, it's what uh, food and security right. and a few other things that right. keep you from breaking into those higher levels. Right, they control so, you at that level. To so make if you sure. never get the proper food and right. all the rest of it. You're still on those lower levels. You're not into hmm. self-actualization. That's right, that's yeah, right. Something See, to it. What you want to do is you want to figure out a way so you can get those lower levels met on your own so that you can go up to self-actualization at the top. But you're right, as long as people are kept uh, hungry. I mean, think about how much time the average person spends just thinking about food. Think about how much time the average person spends spending on food or participating somehow in food. Yeah. Think about all the energy you would have, all the time you would have, all the money you would have if you weren't concentrating your energy and your time and your money on your next meal. You know, we have, we have channels on TV that are dedicated to food. That's all they do is food. Food is, a, is one of the driving forces of being alive is somehow get, making sure you're getting food. Once you start supplementing, once you start getting the nutrients that you need, you will have all this time, all this money, all of this energy that you can spend on self-actualization, on getting smarter, on getting better because you'll have your nutritional needs met, your fundamental needs met. Now, look, I know you have a couple more things on your list, what, minerals and trace right, but so, so continue with vitamins, the B-complex and vitamin C, those are your water-soluble vitamins. Your next class of vitamins are your fatty vitamins. These are extremely important because these are your vitamins of, of healing and regeneration and youth. And those are your fatty vitamins, vitamins D, E, A, and K. We call them DEEK. Vitamin D used to be, uh, they used to tell us in pharmacy school, they said, don't worry about vitamin D because you get it from the sun. Well, today... We don't get vitamin D from the sun because we're all wearing sunscreens and sunblocks. Let me tell you something, Aaron. One of the worst things you can ever put on your skin is a chemical sunscreen. And if you're using a chemical sunscreen because you're protecting yourself from the sun, first of all, you should have better ways to protect yourself from the sun. Eating your vegetables is one of the best and getting antioxidants and nutrients is one of the best. But if you're using a sunscreen, as soon as you get home, wash that thing off because the stuff in a sunscreen is so toxic and so deadly that when I, ha when I buy it in my pharmacy, because I have to make products with it, it has a skull and crossbones on it. Yeah. And if you were to drink that sunscreen out of the bottle, the actual ingredient, sunscreen ingredient, you would die or have your stomach pumped. And I know you're putting it on your skin and it's not like you're eating it, but do you really want to put that kind of deadly compound on your skin? I think not. So vitamin D deficiency today, unfortunately, is very common, largely because people are terrified of the sun. Interestingly, vitamin D is made from cholesterol. So if you're taking a drug that is knocking out your body's ability to make cholesterol, your vitamin D levels will immediately suffer. So vitamin D, is, and vitamin D is extremely important for the immune system. It's important for how cells divide and grow. Vitamin D is chemotherapy. It's used to treat cancer. Vitamin D is amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, vitamin E is important for the cardiovascular system, for the heart, it's important for the brain, it's important for sun protection, it's anti-inflammatory. If you want to heal really fast, if you pop a zit or you have a, a wound, a burn, and you have to go to some party and you don't want to have this zit or wound on your face, super high doses of vitamin E are amazingly healing. And I'm, my super high dose is 1,000 international units, 2,000 international units a day of vitamin E. Vitamin E, by the way, comes in eight different forms and they're all important. And if you buy the cheapo kind of vitamin E, you're not gonna get those eight different forms. Uh, vitamin K, important for bone health and for calcium metabolism and for, wound heal uh, for bruising. And then uh, vitamin A is arguably the single most important vitamin in your body. Vitamin C may be close. Vitamin A is important for the immune system, it's important for skin health, for the liver, endlessly important. Here's the problem with these fatty vitamins. Remember I talked about fat malabsorption, how many people don't absorb their fats. If you suffer from fat malabsorption issues, you immediately will have your vitamin A levels, vitamin D levels, vitamin E levels, and vitamin K levels compromised because you're not gonna be able to absorb those things. So it is absolutely critical to straighten out any fat malabsorption problems for these vitamins. Also, supplementing can help you bypass some of those malabsorption problems, although you'll still have a little bit of problems if you uh, have malabsorption uh, with vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and K levels. Now, vitamin A also is anti-cancer, and topically, vitamin A is tremendous is for acne and tremendous for psoriasis, same with vitamin D. Then your minerals, those are like, those are like the batteries that run everything else. You know, uh, they found a battery in, Mesopot in Iraq, which used to be Mesopotamia. They actually found a battery that was 2,500 years mm -hmm. old. Did you hear about this? Yeah. Yeah. So how you say, well, gosh, these were ancient people. How did they know about batteries? They knew that minerals conduct electricity. And it wasn't until the 1700s that here in the West, or maybe the late 1600s, no, actually it was the end of the 1700s, when Alexander Volta in Italy discovered the same thing. 
that minerals conduct electricity. So when you eat your minerals or drink your minerals, however you're getting your minerals, you are literally drinking electrical energy, but electrical energy at different frequencies. Each mineral conducts energy at a different frequency and there's, diff there's uh, 80 plus different minerals depending on who you ask and they all come off the periodic table. Mineral deficiency should not happen because minerals are in the soil. And when you eat the plants, when you eat the vegetables, you're supposed to get the minerals. Well, of course, today, because of soil erosion and poor farming techniques, the minerals aren't in the soil. Consequently, they're not in the vegetables. So many people are mineral deficient to the point where by the 1920s, it was even, even politicians knew that mineral deficiencies were a problem. The best way to get your minerals, and there's two different kinds of minerals I should tell you. There's, there's macro minerals, there's minerals you need larger amounts of, and then there's trace minerals. The best way to get your minerals from foods is from vegetables. The best way to get your minerals in supplementation is from liquid supplements. Now, there are some minerals that you need large amounts of, and one in particular stands out in importance, and that's zinc. And zinc deficiency is extremely common and it's almost tragic because you can get your zinc needs met with a 50 milligram capsule which costs you less than 10 cents at your average health food store. And zinc is involved in 200 different chemical reactions in your body. Magnesium is involved in 300 different chemical reactions in the body and zinc deficiency and magnesium deficiency are more common than not. So between two minerals alone, you have 500 different chemical reactions in your body. It's going in pairs though, by the way. Minerals come in pairs, that's right. Well, not all of them, but there are mineral pairs. Zinc is paired with copper, calcium is paired with magnesium. So different minerals are paired with each other, and that's one of the things about supplementing is it's a little tricky to get these pairs together, and that's why I like supplement systems like the, the longevity system is the, the yeah. pairs are taken care of for you. But the point I wanna make about zinc is, it is so tragic that people suffer from zinc deficiency, which can cause immune problems and skin problems and bone problems and digestive problems, liver problems and adrenal problems. It's so tragic because it takes so little to get yourself on a, on a zinc supplement. It's, you just go to a health food store and buy a bottle of 100 zinc capsules for less than 10 bucks. So minerals are extremely important. They activate vitamins. Mineral deficiencies are extremely common. Uh, the last chapter is uh, accessory nutrients. There's a bunch of them. One of my favorites is something called NAC for N-acetylcysteine. Uh, NAC is the number one most important supplement you could take for liver toxicity. Many people suffer from liver toxicity. Uh, NAC has a way of combining with mercury and other toxic minerals, helping it pass through your body. Another very important trace nutrient that, or accessory nutrient uh, that people should be taking is good bacteria or probiotics. Yeah. Now, I've been talking about probiotics for a long time. And I was very gratified to see Jamie Lee Curtis on TV talking about probiotics also, because now even drug companies know that probiotics are so powerful and so cheap and so dramatically effective that you can actually buy them at a grocery store, probiotics. You're not gonna get the good stuff at a grocery store, you're gonna get the watered down stuff at a grocery store, but that shows you how powerful this stuff is that even drug companies know that they could sell you probiotics. And let me tell you something, there is nothing that will take care of your digestive problems faster than a good probiotic supplement. I like the Biolumin Nightly Essence from Longevity, but there's a lot of good probiotic supplements. If you have Crohn's disease, celiac disease, any kind of ulcerative colitis or any kind of irritable bowel syndrome problems, get yourself on a probiotic supplement. It is unbelievable how fast those things will work for digestive problems yeah. within a day in many cases. Okay, well, hold on right there, because I know I, for one, get really confused once we get down the alphabet and all the technical names. But first of all, your radio show, Brightside, Ben, you really break it down. I've listened a lot to it. And Thank you. I've learned so much. But the other is a Longevity, the Longevity line of vitamins. Right. Uh, Alex has the website, InfoWarsTeam.com. You can get the Beyond Tanky Tangerine that has almost all these stuff we're talking well, about. Well, we made it simple. The Alex Pack is a very yeah. simple way to interface with these nutrients, to get involved with these nutrients. No, like you say, it can be a little bit confusing. And I understand. I've been doing this for 30 years, and so... I have a way of, of, of grasping it that the average person isn't going to be able to grasp. You don't have to study nutrition for 30 years in order to participate this way. The yeah. Alex Pact is an easy way to get the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Ultimate EFAs, the Essential Fatty Acids, and the Magnesium and Calcium, Liquid Magnesium and Calcium, and the Osteo FX. It yeah. costs around 112 bucks a month. It is the best investment in your health you will make. It is half the price of your average 30-day prescription cost. Now, I know some people are on insurance and they're paying only $10 or $20 copay, but for 112 bucks a month, which is about $4, less than $4 a day, you can have all your nutritional needs met and, and if you have any kind of health issue, 
whether it's diabetes or high blood pressure or whatever it is, you can notice an immediate change once you start to take these products. Now, I'm not going to tell you you're going to reverse absolutely everything right away. That's not necessarily going to happen until you've been participating in, a, for, in it for a while, but you'll notice a difference right away. Almost everybody notices differences within days of getting on the Alex pack and the products in the Alex And metaphorically, pack. you're going to slash and cut through the vines of the jungle in terms of your interaction with the big I love it. With the machine. Yeah. You're going to derivet. You're going to get those bolts yeah, out so of there. We're going to spend a couple minutes. Obviously, we can't cover it all. They should check out your radio show for more, but some of the specific diseases. I want to start with the gut because I was real surprised to learn just a couple of years ago how much of the immune system is located in the gut. Isn't that amazing? 80%. And by the way, is there something to the intuition in the gut? I don't know. But. Oh, yeah, there is. Your gut has a brain. Your most important, or one of your most important neurotransmitters is serotonin. But the large majority of serotonin is produced in your digestive system. Your digestive system is your second brain. In fact, there's a book called The Second Brain, which mm -hmm. talks about the, uh, the intelligence of the digestive system. You know, the ancient Greeks, they used to do autopsies and they used to look at dead bodies, and they actually thought that the digestive system was a separate animal that lived in your body. Yeah. It, had its, it has its own brain, it has its own nervous system, it has its own neurotransmitters, it has its own immune system, and it's independent from the rest of your body. It's connected to the rest of your body through a little area in your small intestine, which is actually one of the keys to being healthy, is to understand that connection between the digestive system and the rest of your body. But your point is very, very well taken. First of all, what is your immune system? Your immune system is your body's defense system, right? It's supposed to fight the enemy. Well, where does most of the enemy get into your body? Where through the gut, yeah. Through, the, through what you eat. So, of course, the largest part of your immune system is going to be located in the digestive system. And just to show you how dramatic this is, there is a, a surgical procedure that tens of thousands of little children, uh, of, of 10 and 12-year-old children, have every year. It's a surgical procedure where they remove part of your immune system. Yeah. And this part of your immune system, by the time a kid is 10 or 12 years old, is so inflamed and it's so puffed up with pus and with white blood cells and with inflammatory factors and immune factors that it clogs the airwaves. This little part of the immune system becomes swollen, just like a big pimple, and it, it blocks the kid's ability to breathe. So the kid has to go in and have a surgical procedure to remove that. That's called a tonsillectomy. And what we're talking about is the tonsils, which are part of your immune system. Your tonsils are a part of your immune system that becomes big and inflamed and swollen for 10 years or 12 years of eating the wrong food. And this is a demonstration. You, we see it in the tonsils, but it happens in the rest of the body as well. Yeah. That inflammation, that immune reaction is happening in all throughout the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is your body's sewage system. It's transporting waste material. Do you ever watch those Civil War shows or Civil War uh, documentaries where they'll show you the dead bodies that were piling up in the Civil War? I mean, you, look, you're a history, you yeah. understand history. In the Civil War, that was the most horrific ugliest war and there were dead bodies at Gettysburg and in Shiloh and these different war sites, they would pile up the dead bodies, sometimes tens of thousands of dead bodies. And these uh, war sites with the dead bodies would be filled with flies and smell and the bodies would be exploding and there'd be bacteria everywhere. It's just the most horrific, disgusting scene, right? Well, guess what? That's what your immune system looks like after years of abuse. Because when your immune system is activated and it's fighting the enemy, it's producing uh, white blood cells and infectious material, and it's killing things. And when a cell dies, it emits uh, gases and it emits chemicals. And as millions of cells die, they emit lots of gases and lots of chemicals and lots of uh, the uh, chemical equivalent of flies and things surrounding them. Over the course of time, our circulatory, and our, immune, our circulatory system and our immune system and our lymphatic system become like a Civil War battlefield with dead bodies and pus and infectious material and chemicals. And that stuff starts to accumulate in, in the circulatory system and the blood doesn't move as effectively and you don't get oxygenated as effectively in it starts to accumulate in the lymphatic system and you don't get nutriated as effectively and fats can't move through effectively and it starts to accumulate in joints and then the body starts to attack the joints and so over the course of time as our immune system becomes clogged and our immune system becomes activated we start to break down our body can't get nourished as well our tissues can't get oxygenated as well poisons start to accumulate and that's what we call the death and disease process and it's all secondary to an activated immune system which itself 
is secondary from problems with the digestive system. But and, I mean, you brought up probiotics. That's very important for specifically the digestive system. Absolutely. Go, right? Absolutely. One of the ways we process food is by bacteria that live in the colon. And those bacteria are supposed to be populated initially through breast milk. Mm -hmm. But when we're born, if, we're not get, if we don't get breastfed, if we're not getting breast milk, or if our mother doesn't uh, give us breast milk long enough, she weans us too early, or if we are breastfed but our mothers weren't healthy, all of a sudden our digestive system and our probiotic population is not as healthy as well. Yeah. And that means we don't detoxify substances because probiotics are important for detoxification. Probiotics are important for elimination. You know, the large bulk of your stool is probiotic. It's bacteria. 70% mm. of your turd is actually made up of bacteria. If you don't have probiotics, that's a recipe for constipation. And it, is, it never ceases to amaze me how many people think it's normal to have two bowel movements or less a week. Probiotics are one of the fastest ways you can improve your elimination. Probiotics also make the B complex. They also make vitamin K. They also make vitamin A. So if you're deficient in probiotics, number one, you're not going to detoxify substances as well. Number two, you're not going to be eliminating as well. And number three, you've lost a major source of nutrients. So probiotic supplementation is key. Well, I wanted to bring this up about the gut. I know the, the great crew we have found it. It's the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Not only do they focus so much of the resources on vaccinations for the whole world, but they did a lot of research on the immune system in the gut and its specific reaction with vaccines That's and so much more. Do you guys have that? 80, more than 88 grants. Uh, I'm not sure what year this is. I think I spot checked 210 going from memory. Uh, but anyway, it has a great deal to do with I'm not sure if it's here on the screen. I'd have to read the details. But you can look up their research grants, and a large portion of them, I would say between a third and half, have to do with the gut and the immune system that's located in the digestive system. That's so, fascinating. Uh, as far as fighting back against the machine, I find that pretty troubling. Bill and Melinda Gates. Good friends. Yeah, I know there's a lot more to cover. We wanted to talk about obesity and diabetes. Right. A lot of uh, obesity and diabetes affect one out of three Americans. Um, and they're choice diseases, they're choice illness, they're choice dysfunctions. If you're obese or you're overweight, and I think obesity is 20 pounds or more overweight, and, and one out of three Americans is considered obese and overweight, and, and the numbers are rising. The single most important strategy, and there's a lot of different strategies, but the single most important strategy for helping you reduce weight is to replace your carbohydrates, your refined carbohydrates with protein, which we mm -hmm. talked about earlier. The single most important step you can make is to replace your refined carbohydrates with protein. Now keep in mind, Body fat produces female hormone, the female hormone estrogen, and the uh, estrogen makes you slothful and slow and lazy and not want to work and not want to work out. So the more body fat you're carrying, the harder it's going to be to exercise and the harder it's going to be to go out and move. So it's almost like a vicious circle because then you get more body fat and that makes it harder to move and then you get more body fat and that makes it harder to move. In order to break that cycle, it's critical to reduce the amount of body fat that you're carrying. Mm -hmm. Because once you reduce the amount of body fat you're carrying, you'll have more energy to do things, and that will help you reduce more body fat, and you can reverse that vicious, that vicious circle, take it the other way. In order to start the, the ball rolling, to turn that circle around, it's key to reduce body fat. The best way to do that is to reduce your refined carbohydrates and get yourself on more protein. That's the quickest way to do that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, you're going to want to reduce the amount of uh, processed fats, and the fastest way to do that is to get yourself on essential fatty acids. And thirdly, you're going to want to reduce the amount of, uh, of uh, the wrong kinds of salts, wrong kinds of salty foods, and you do that by taking in more minerals. Here's a little trick for you. If you, uh, and by the way, you have a gland in your body called your adrenal glands, and your adrenal glands are responsible for helping you handle stresses, emotional stresses, psychological stresses, or physiologic stresses. When your adrenal glands are overworked, you're going to crave salt. One of the kindest, sweetest things you can do for your adrenal glands is to make sure you're taking good minerals, like the colloidal minerals from Longevity, the Ultimate Classic, or the Tangy Tangerine, especially the mineral zinc. Here's a little trick for you if you just want to demonstrate to yourself how effective this can be. Get yourself some Celtic sea salt, put it in water, and then sip on Celtic sea salt all day long. You will reach a point where you can no longer drink any more salt. That's when you know you've had enough salt. But until you've reached that point, not only will you notice that your salt cravings are going away, but you'll notice that you feel better. You notice that you have more energy and you have a, a stronger ability to withstand stress. Now, Celtic sea salt's not perfect. It's a good source of salt, but it doesn't have all the minerals you need. But it's a good way to demonstrate how effective it is 
how powerful it is and how quickly powerful it is to get yourself on a mineral supplement program. The best minerals are going to be colloidal liquid minerals like in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine or the Ultimate Classic or those products. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's relatively quickly talk about diabetes and blood pressure. Again, too. diabetes is a blood sugar issue. And by the way, elevations in cholesterol, elevations in cholesterol are wedded, are connected to blood sugar and insulin problems. There's two factors occurring when you have diabetes. One is a problem with the body's blood sugar levels, and one is the pot, a problem with the body's insulin levels. The body doesn't like quick burning. The body likes slow burning. Sugar represents quick burning. If you put a marshmallow in a, in a flame, what happens to that marshmallow? Yeah. Poof, right? Explodes quickly because sugar burns fast and it burns hot. You ever get a sugar burn? It, does, it, it burns super, super hot. So the body has evolved a system for yanking that sugar out of the blood because sugar is very dangerous stuff. It's going to cause fires. It'll specifically cause fires with protein, and, and protein and sugar react in a burning reaction. So the body's evolved a very uh, elaborate system for getting that sugar out of your blood. And that elaborate system involves the hormone insulin. So when you eat sugar, the body goes, oh my God, a fire, let's get some insulin. The insulin takes the sugar out of your blood and stores it, it stores it as fat. So then you, you're low blood sugar, right? So you say, well, what am I gonna do? I'm, I'm tired, I'll go get some more sugar. You get some more sugar, the body goes, oh my God, a fire, let's get some insulin, it pulls the sugar out of your blood again, you're low blood sugar. And you end up on this, this vicious spiral of high blood sugar, low blood sugar, high blood sugar, low blood sugar, high blood sugar, low blood sugar, and it's all being controlled by the hormone insulin. Now insulin, in addition to being a, a hormone that yanks sugar out of your blood, is also involved in making cells divide and making you grow. So when your insulin levels go high, your cells will start to divide very fast, and you will get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you're not doing it correctly, that bigger and bigger and bigger means more fat. Now eventually, your body's gonna say, well, I'm not, I, I don't wanna listen to insulin anymore because insulin keeps going up and it becomes insulin resistant. And then you make more insulin. And then your body, your body goes through that whole high blood sugar, low blood sugar cycle, and eventually your body stops listening to that insulin. And so what happens over the course of time is your body completely stops listening to insulin. And now you have elevated blood sugar, and now your body's not listening to insulin, and now the sugar is burning a fire in your body, and you have lost your mechanism for getting the sugar out of your blood. That's called diabetes. Diabetes is a disease that occurs over the course of time when the body stops listening to insulin. It becomes, it becomes resistant to insulin. It's called insulin resistance. So what happens with insulin resistance is not only have you lost your blood sugar control, and now you have all these fires going on in your body. By the way, the technical term for those fires is glycation, and glycation occurs in little blood vessels in your eyes, and that causes blindness, and diabetes is the leading cause of blindness. Glycation can occur in uh, little blood vessels in your feet, and diabetes is one of the leading causes of amputations. Di uh, glycation, this burning reaction, can occur to the microscopic blood vessels in your kidneys, and diabetes is a leading cause of kidney disease. When your insulin goes up, insulin can cause, because it makes cells divide, insulin will make cholesterol levels go up. So now you've got blindness, you've got amputations, you've got kidney disease, you've got elevated blood fats, and it's all secondary to blood sugar and insulin. The fastest way to protect yourself from circulatory problems, the fastest way to protect yourself from elevated blood fats and cholesterol, the fastest way to protect yourself from obesity is to drop your blood sugar and make your body more sensitive to insulin. How do you make your body more sensitive to insulin? How do you drop your blood sugar? Once again, all roads lead to restricting the sugar and the refined carbohydrates and replacing it with protein. If you're concerned about cholesterol, if you're concerned about blood fat, if you're concerned about uh, eye problems, uh, problems with the extremities, circulatory problems of all kinds, including cardiovascular problems, heart problems, the best thing you can do is restrict your sugar and make your body more sensitive to insulin. And you can do that in several ways. One of the best is with vitamins and nutrients. The B vitamins are your best friend if you have diabetes, your absolute best friend to protect you from cardiovascular issues, your absolute best friend to help you lower your cholesterol if that's what you so desire. And not a single one of these strategies, Aaron, requires a prescription drug. Not a single one. We haven't even mentioned a prescription drug. There is no time other than an emergency when you need to be on a prescription drug for life. 
If your doctor has told you that you're gonna be on this high blood pressure drug for the rest of your life, you're gonna be on this cholesterol-lowering statin drug for the rest of your, of your life, he has not followed, he does not understand biochemistry. There's not a single prescription drug that can do what any of these nutrients are doing that we're talking about. And that's why I do this as a pharmacist, because my interest is medicinal chemistry. My interest is the chemistry of, of medicine, and there is no finer medicine than a, a, a nutritional supplement. A nutritional supplement is what a drug dreams it could be. If a drug goes to bed at night and has a fantasy, it pretends it's vitamin C. Because a, a vitamin or a nutrient has all the properties of a drug with none of the side effects and no toxicities. Incredible. Incredible, right? Not to mention a big violation of the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, the Hippocratic Oath says, I will uh, give no toxin. I will give nothing, that, nothing lethal. No I will do no harm. I will give nothing to a patient, including drugs. The Hippocratic Oath mentions drugs. It says, mm -hmm. I will give no drugs that cause tox toxicity. And yet we've created this entire model that depends on prescription medicine. We have massive society-wide problems here. This, this is, is a big part of it This here. is true. Uh, you also know a lot about skin, but check out brightsideben.com for that. You want to give us a quick highlight on that? Skin is so easy to treat because the skin divides more rapidly than any other tissue in the body save the digestive system. And the skin and the digestive system have real interesting connection. Both the skin and the digestive system turn over super, super fast. The skin turns over every four to eight weeks, which means if you have zits today, four to eight weeks from now, you do not have to have those zits. If you have eczema today, four to eight weeks from now, you don't have to have eczema. If you have any skin issue, four to eight weeks from now, that skin issue can be gone because the skin cells are constantly turning over. The number one reason why the skin reacts, whether you're dealing with eczema or psoriasis or rosacea or acne, the number one reason why the skin reacts in a disease state is because of nutritional deficiencies or food allergies. And those are the two easiest things to take care of for nutritional deficiencies. Get yourself nutrients for food allergies, eliminate the allergens. And I'm talking, your breakouts can be gone. And let me tell you, you the joy in somebody's face when you make their zits go away, when you, you don't make them, but you tell them what to do to have their skin clear up, the joy is indescribable. And when I see somebody who's broken out and they come to me, I get excited because I know that they will see for themselves how powerful this kind of supplementation program can be. I know that they're gonna have their own personal demonstration of the effectiveness of a good nutritional supplement program. So I get excited when I see somebody come into my office or come into my pharmacy with eczema or psoriasis or acne or some kind of skin issue because they're so easy to treat and they happen, the treatment, the, the uh, remedies occur so fast. But to put it in short, uh, whatever your problem is, if you start taking these vitamin supplements, you're going to have positive results almost no quickly. Quickly, mm -hmm. yes. Well, it's at InfoWarsTeam.com, and Ben Fuchs' show is BrightSideBen.com. It's also on the GCN network. Really recommend checking it out. That's all for this extended interview. Check out part one uh, from Monday, December the 12th as well. Thanks, and good night. InfoWarsNews.com. Thank you for joining us. This is just breaking as we went live here. We'll cover it uh, towards the end of the news tonight. Ron Paul has tied for first place in Iowa. The same numbers are coming in in many other states across the country. The system is in panic mode. He's tied with the globalist Newt Gingrich. And as people learn more about Gingrich, Gingrich is going to fall like a shooting star. We are witnessing history right now. More on that coming up. I also interviewed Ron Paul today on the radio. We'll be breaking down uh, the incredible news nuggets that came out of that, including Ron Paul talking about the fact that Fast and Furious was a Justice Department criminal operation, in his words, to frame the Second Amendment and is a false flag attack 
against our country. That is coming up towards the end of the news segment. Before we air the second part of the interview, it's 45 minutes long, the second part is with Ben Fuchs, pharmacist Ben Fuchs, on the fact that it is basic science and molecular biology of how to be healthy and lose weight versus uh, what the establishment medical system is selling. That extended part two of the interview they did live last night will air this evening premiering here, so stay with us. We've also got some highlights of my radio uh, slash internet TV interview with Ron Paul today, so that's coming up after the news. Okay, let's look at drones. I remember 16 years ago, first being on the radio and learning about covert drone tests around the country and reading RAND Corporation and Pentagon prospectus plans on the fact that, hey, militaries never like to engage in guerrilla war because there's high casualties when you're dragging people's families off to, to re-education camps. But if we can get ground robots, uh, air-based robots that are autonomous from humans, we can basically do whatever we want, even if the military says no. But in the interim, in that in-between step from having a fully human-operated military to the robot pre-programmed autonomous system, there's a middle ground, a transition.